Hey, this is Philip from Seafson Motor Co. And on today's episode, a comprehensive review and installation video of a KAD anti-roll bar. So before we get into the review and installation of the anti-roll bar, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about how it works. So an anti-roll bar is a pretty simple device uh, and it has a big difference uh, on the way that your car handles and behaves. Uh, we always put a rear anti-roll bar uh, on a Mini uh, that is going to be intended to be driven aggressively or in a sporting fashion or raced or anything like that. Um, and I would even go so far as to say that um, under certain situations, uh, an anti-roll bar is even safer just because you get that much more uh, reaction out of the car. Now, Minis already handle amazing uh, from factory. In factory, they come with no anti-roll bars. Uh, however, if you look at any Mini race car, I guarantee you, it will have a rear bar it's because it makes a big difference. Uh, they are pretty simple uh, devices though. All it is is a, a metal bar here um, and it connects uh, both sides of the suspension like the left and the right. So what happens is when you go around a corner, one wheel rises, the one that where the car falls into it rises up uh, and the anti-roll bar because it's connected left and right, it will raise or put a load on the other side uh, to, to bring that wheel up to flatten out the vehicle. So Sometimes it's confused that people think, oh, you get more grip when you add a, an anti-roll bar. And technically you actually get less grip on the side that you're putting the anti-roll bar. So for instance, if you have a rear bar, uh, it will decrease the grip on that side, on the, on the rear side of the car. Um, but what happens is, is the overall dynamics of the car change uh, and you can go from a car that understeers to a car that oversteers and therefore carry more speed through the corner. It also changes the way that the car feels. Um, you have a lot more control when a car is flatter, uh, it feels more stable at speed, uh, and you have more confidence while you're driving it. So the general rule is you wanna run the least amount of bar necessary to get the best handling. And we always prefer to run suspension on the softer side um, with a little bit of a bigger bar, especially on the minis, they're quite stiff, um, just with the rubber cone suspension. Uh, they handle great as is with that. Uh, so you want to keep that side as supple as possible and increase your roll stiffness by using one of these. So this uh, particular one here is the 5.8 KAD rear anti-roll bar. And in our opinion, this is the best one on the market. Uh, we've tried pretty much everything that's out there and the fit and finish on this, uh, as well as all the other KAD products uh, is top quality. So today we're going to do kind of an interesting video. We are going to get into a car that we just finished building. It's got entirely new suspension, brand new. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the setup later on. We're gonna go for a drive as is with no anti-roll bar. Then we're gonna show you how to install the rear anti-roll bar. And then we'll go for another drive afterwards and uh, we'll do a very unscientific test, but uh, I'll show you kind of the, the difference that it makes uh, both in the feel and how it looks on the outside in terms of how much roll. So uh, with no further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so we're just gonna take a little drive around scenic Mitchell Island. Car's still warming up. Just came back from the alignment shop. We've got uh, pretty good alignment on it, usual specs that we like to run. Um, for those who are curious, on, on most kind of street driven cars like this, we like to do about a half a degree negative camber in the front. Uh, tiny bit of toe out, almost straight ahead and about three and a half to four degrees of caster. Uh, for the rear, we like to keep it uh, a little bit toe in um, and, uh, and about 0.3 negative camber. Uh, keeping it pretty straight. For something more aggressive, if you're doing uh, kind of more track driving or whatnot, we can bring in the camber a little bit. Uh, but honestly, uh, for most street driven cars, about a half a degree is great. So now we're starting to get some heat in it. This car feels great. The, uh, the setup we've got on the suspension, maybe we should talk about a little bit before we uh, talk about how the suspension feels right now. And uh, 
It's our pretty usual setup. We've got uh, red spot cones uh, on all four corners. We've got high lows. Uh, we've got the adjustable control arms, front uh, and rear, uh, the adjusters at least for the rear. Um, we are running KYB AGX shocks, and right now we have them set uh, at the softest setting. This is uh, kind of the most comfortable for the street, and it also gives you uh, maybe a better idea on the effects of the sway bar uh, if we make the, the suspension as soft as possible. So any roll resistance you'll see is coming from the sway bar. So speaking of that, uh, we're driving around now. Car feels really planted, feels very comfortable. Um, I'm doing a little U-turn here. I can already feel how much it's leaning. Even with the red spot cones and these performance shocks, you can still feel the roll with um, with a, a stock mini like this, they don't have any sway bars from factory. So uh, it makes the suspension as, um, as compliant as possible because one side is not being affected by the other side. However, uh, there is a fair bit of roll, uh, especially when you really kind of knock it into a corner. Uh, I'll come up to a corner over here and we'll see. I just went over some speed bumps there, and one nice thing about adding uh, an anti-roll bar is that because it's connecting the left rear uh, left wheel to the right wheel, if they go over a bump at the exact same time, as in the case with the speed bump, there's no difference in the ride quality. Let me just go around, make a hard left here. So much fun. So I felt it, it kind of it dipped in really nice, um, but the whole car rolled over and I could hear the front uh, left as I went around that right-hander uh, squeal a little bit. Uh, I'm on the Falcon tires right now, and these aren't the grippiest tires, but it's a good, uh, good way of uh, showing the effects of a sway bar. Uh, if you have tires that have uh, very little grip, um, you can more easily experiment with the limits of that grip. If we had some AO32s or something on here, it'd be a lot harder to find that limit. As with a lot of stuff, uh, it's sometimes hard to illustrate on film how something feels. Uh, so we are going to do our best to try and show you maybe a difference visually of, uh, of the roll uh, and how it how it affects the car when you have an anti-roll bar. So down at the end of the road here, there's a quiet cul-de-sac and I'm gonna spin it around a couple times uh, and hopefully from outside you can see uh, how much the car is rolling. And then we'll do the exact same test in the same cul-de-sac uh, afterwards with the, uh, the anti-roll bar attached. So we're coming up to it now. Spin it around. The tires are squealing pretty good. Now, from that test there, I could really feel uh, the front end kind of plowing. The, uh, the outside front tire was squealing uh, and it felt like no matter how much gas I put, whether I put a little bit or a lot, it would still always uh, understeer. It was still pushing outside of the corner. Uh, so hopefully the anti-roll bar can fix that. So I would say that this is a great setup. Um, this, this really feels nice uh, with, with our kind of suspension package that we've come up with. We've run this on almost every car that we've done. Uh, but for, I would say for normal sort of street driving, feels great. Uh, if this is kind of your daily commuter, uh, awesome. But if you want to have that little bit of a sporting edge, uh, I definitely think that an anti-roll bar is going to make an improvement, but we will see. So uh, let's head back to the shop now uh, and we will uh, throw the sway bar on and see what happens. So 
So once you've got the car in the air and the wheels taken off, you wanna loosen up the adjusters on the uh, rear drums, uh, and then you'll be able to take the, uh, the Phillips head screw that's right here. Um, sometimes there'll be two, sometimes there'll be one, sometimes there'll be none. Uh, take that out and then the uh, drum will come off. I always t loosen the adjuster by equal amounts, both left and right, if they've already been pre-adjusted. I just did six turns loose, um, and that way when I go back to putting them on, tighten it up six times and you know it's in the vicinity of correctly adjusted. So with that done, you can take one of these. This is an impact screwdriver. This is really handy to have uh, for taking out these uh, Phillips head screws here. Uh, they, uh, if you get a screwdriver in there, sometimes you can strip the end, but with this, use a hammer uh, and they should come right out. No problem. Now once it's loose, you can just take it out by hand. Take that out. And then the drum should come right off. Like that. And do the same thing on the other side. With the drum removed, you can take off the shoes really easy, just from the top. Pry it off, pry it off, like that. And then I pop the spring out. Put that aside. And then same thing with the bottom. Take it off of the uh, emergency brake lever and you don't even have to remove that. It just comes out just like that. Put those aside. You need to take off the two nuts and bolts that are on the uh, top side of the backing plate here. Uh, this one here and this one here. The bottom one can remain in place. With the bolts removed, now we can install the plate uh, onto the back side of the, uh, the drum plate here. Uh, now, they are sided, so when you install them, you wanna make sure that it's got this hump that kinda goes up. Uh, this is facing towards the back of the car. And the only other thing to note is that you'll see that on one of the supplied bolts, there is a thick washer. Uh, this washer has to go on the back side uh, of the drum plate here um, at the at the front most bolt hole, like near the front of the car. And the reason for that is on the back side, there is a plate here uh, that holds the emergency brake. And, uh, and this takes up the gap that that plate has so that it's a nice uh, flat place and you don't have to bend or uh, tweak the brackets. So when you're installing them, put it that way. Uh, and I like to put the bolts through from the front side, it's just a little bit easier to fit. Uh, you don't need to take the shock off. And then same thing on the other side. Okay, and now we're ready to install the blades uh, onto the anti-roll bar itself. Uh, for this, you just wanna take uh, the um, M6 socket head screws that are um, included, and I like to put a little bit of uh, Loctite on them. Don't want these coming loose. And then one at a time, you just feed it through. Um, there's the four holes here goes through there and then these go into the four sides and then when you're connecting them just make sure that they're pointing obviously the same direction. As with anything when there's multiple uh, screws or bolts I like to put them all in uh, just kind of hand tight and then snug them up uh, after they're all located. If you tighten one too early uh, sometimes it can screw up the clocking of it and you won't be able to get them all in. Torque these down, don't have to be crazy tight, but just nice and snug. And because they've got some Loctite, they shouldn't come out. And then we're gonna do the other side with the same orientation. Now we can take the sway bar and I like to uh, just kind of mock it up, get it in place. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the, uh, the sway bar as an alignment tool for attaching the, uh, the brackets that hold it to the car. Uh, on some cars, you might need to take the uh, exhaust off. It depends on the muffler situation. There's also a little tab on the back of the subframe here that sometimes there could be some interference. You might need to bend that up. I think in this case, it should work though. So we can just slot it up here, over across. And then it goes something like that. 
Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just uh, loosely attach it with the, uh, the bolts on the side here so that the way that these work is it goes uh, from the heim joint. You wanna make sure that they're even left to right in terms of uh, turning it here. You can adjust the, uh, the height and we will dial that in later. So don't worry about it right now, but just make it uh, so that they're even. And then the bolt goes through and then there's a little CAD coated uh, washer and then uh, the sway bar blade and then the, uh, the other washer and the nylock. So for right now, we're gonna attach it. I'm gonna use the outermost uh, bolt hole. You'll see that on the anti-roll bar, there are three holes. The outermost would be the most leverage um, for the suspension, meaning it'll be the softest bar. Uh, you can then move those in uh, and stiffen the effective rate of the bar and you can tune that while you're tuning the suspension. But for mock-up purposes right now, we'll just stick with the outermost one. Do that on both sides. And then I'll just throw the, uh, the washer and the nylock just loosely on there for now, just so it doesn't fall off. And it's important when it's uh, sitting here that you see that the, uh, the end link faces down here and then meets the, uh, the blade of the anti-roll bar. You don't want it, can't move it that way, but you don't want it so the end link is facing up. Because uh, remember when the suspension compresses, when it's uh, sitting on the ground, uh, this here, you want this end link to be as uh, vertical as possible. So make sure it's facing down to this part. From here, we can now go and get our plates, uh, which mount to the car. We can use this um, to make sure that they're aligned. They need to be aligned, otherwise it's gonna bind up when it moves through its suspension arc. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosely bolt those in place, line it up, mark the holes, then take it down, drill them, uh, and install them for good. So let's get the plates. This is what the plates look like. They are sided. You'll see that there is kind of an angled cut on one of them. It follows the, the, the shape of the rear subframe. And the way that these attach is they bolt up kind of right here on the backmost side of the rear subframe right before it goes uh, horizontal right here. And you'll see that there's a little bit of a lip on both these sides. That's what we'll be drilling to and using the supplied hardware to bolt it in place. The bar itself runs through these two plastic bushings with a, with a cap here. I always like to take them out. You'll see there's some grooves on the inside here. Um, I put a little bit of grease inside there. It uh, just helps it stop uh, squeaking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these uh, kind of lined up, mocked up in the correct side. I'm gonna take out these bolts uh, and nuts here so that we can use them uh, to mark the spots that we're gonna be attaching them. Uh, so you wanna just kind of disassemble these, stall them onto the bar, uh, and we'll start to get everything mocked up. Okay, so I have got uh, these 10 mils here just tightened up enough uh, that I can kind of move it. We're gonna be taking this all apart anyway, as soon as I don't have the washers on there, that's fine. Um, so I've got it so it's just able to be uh, moved left and right, uh, but it holds the orientation correct. Um, uh, side to side. So we're gonna do this same thing on the other side and then we're gonna mock it up and again you want so that this bracket here sits um, as high as it will go uh, on the flat section uh, here of the subframe and again uh, making sure that there is properly aligned you'll see that it fits really nice once you have it like that. So once we do this side we'll make sure that these are uh, mocked up and held tight and then we'll mark the four holes. Now everything's fitting really good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mock it up, uh, get it uh, oriented correctly, and I'm gonna use two little C-clamps here uh, to pinch against the inside seam here and on the other side, and this will hold it in place so that I can mark all the holes. Uh, if you have a friend, it helps just be able to hold it, and then you can mark it up, but for us, we're just gonna use some C-clamps. Now go ahead and uh, punch the holes. I'm using a center hole punch. Uh, these come in a variety of different uh, thicknesses to perfectly match the hole size that you're going in so you know it's centered in the hole. Uh, these are quarter inch holes, so I'm using a quarter inch punch. You will only be able to get to the two bottom ones on both sides because the bar interferes with the top holes, but that's okay. Once we have those, uh, we can bolt the plate on by itself and do the other ones. Let's punch these. And now we remove the plates in order to punch the other holes. Now on the two bottom holes that you punched, uh, drill them out with a quarter inch drill bit.
Now we can remove the bar. This will allow us access to be able to drill the other two holes. Now we can install the plates for good, so make sure you got the correct hardware. Uh, that would be bolt, washer, washer, nylock. Okay, so now we can install the plastic bushings. Uh, like I said, I like to put a little bit of grease just on the inside here. That stops it from squeaking. That will go back onto there. And then the bar sits like that. There, and we cover it with the other piece. Also grease that up. There we go. So bushing, plate, washer, nut. Make sure that the KAD is facing up the correct way. It makes absolutely no difference, but come on, you gotta rep the brand. Now that the bar is all tight, we wanna move it, make sure it doesn't bind, it should move freely. Uh, and then we're going to uh, loosen off these top Allen head bolts that hold the heim joint end link. Uh, we're gonna put a little bit of Loctite, tighten these down, and then we're gonna put it on the ground and we can align everything from there. Now that the vehicle's on the ground, uh, on its tires here, uh, we can see what the ride height is sitting at. And the objective is to get this end link here to be as vertical as possible. So you'll see when you spin it, it lengthens, and when you tighten it up, it shortens. Uh, what we're gonna do is orient this here, and we are gonna try to see um, which bolt hole this will align with and what length it needs to be to be as vertical as possible. It's not gonna be completely vertical, uh, but in this case, it'll be the furthest out bolt hole and this as far in as it will go, which is there. And of course you wanna make sure the heim joint is uh, parallel so it's not binding and it's able to move here. So with this adjustment set, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the bolt in and we're gonna to go to the other side. Okay, now that the one side is tight, what we're gonna do is go to the other side. And what we wanna do is we wanna set it at the same bolt hole uh, with the heim joint in the, the same location. However, uh, it might require a turn or two depending on your ride height. So what you want is that there is no uh, preload or binding being put through the bolt here. So we're gonna adjust this here until it just slides through nice and easy and there's no preload on the anti-roll bar. And that concludes the install. Just make sure to torque the wheels and then time for a test drive. Okay, now we're heading out on the maiden voyage with uh, anti-roll bar attached. Making our first right. Wow, oh, immediately different. Wow. 
it's really interesting doing a side-by-side -side comparison with everything else staying the same. We've usually done cars where, you know, they come in, they've got worn out suspension, we do it all with the anti-roll bar on there and it feels different, but seeing this with an AB test, like I did one corner and I can already tell there's a difference. So this is a good test now. We're going straight down a bumpy road. Um, I would say that maybe there's a minor amount of, uh, of increased kind of and stiffness feeling, uh, but essentially the same when I'm going straight. And I'm coming out to kind of a long sweeper now, I'll kind of knock it in. Yeah, and it's really interesting. You kind of turn it in and you feel the back end of the car remaining flat, which is, you know, kind of obvious that it would do that, but it's an interesting feeling because the nose kind of dips a bit and then the back just sweeps around and following it rather than this feeling of the nose diving and the front end kind of kicking its butt in the air. Uh, it's an interesting feeling. So I just went over some speed bumps there. Essentially no difference from before. Feels almost exactly the same. Here, go over another one. Yeah, feels the same. Let me do a couple of quick lane changes. You can see how fast the car reacts to inputs. I'll go around here. We didn't go around here before. It feels more flickable. It feels more fun. There's just this feeling of immediacy to the steering. You, you turn it, and look at that. It just instant and this is a normal rack this isn't a quick rack with a quick rack it's even even more instantaneous like you just you turn the wheel and the car turns there's no turn turn it's just immediate and another thing that I'm noticing is that the tires aren't squealing uh, whereas before kind of any fast turn they would squeal and uh, it's because Although technically they say that an anti-roll bar will actually remove grip from the corner it's put on or the, uh, the side it's put on. So technically we're removing grip from the back of this car, but, but that may be technically true, but what it also does is it balances out the equation of the total grip of the car. So yeah, we're removing a little bit of grip from the from the rear but what that does is it allows the front to use more of its grip and instead of leaning all onto the outside tire it's allowed to use both tires and the lack of squealing uh, is a good indication that uh, we have actually more grip overall uh, and I'll tell you right now it feels definitely like like it's a lot more glued to the ground um, than it was before it feels tight uh, controlled and um, safe also. It feels direct, it doesn't feel scary. Uh, I know if you put a, an anti-roll bar on the back that's too big, uh, you can get um, snap oversteer, lift off oversteer, um, which you can correct with better driving habits. Uh, but with this bar, with the 5 8 bar, um, it, really, uh, it really doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't feel at all scary or intimidating. It doesn't feel like it's gonna snap oversteer. Speaking from someone who has snapped oversteered into a lake, if you remember that. <laughs> as much as I drive minis, which is every single day, uh, it's, Still so much fun. I, I, I still still think that there's no car like this. If you haven't driven a Mini, you're just watching the channel because you like uh, the stuff we're doing, I encourage you, please go and drive one. And especially one that's sorted as well as this car. Uh, it's, it's just so much fun. These 998s are hilarious because they make a ton of noise and it feels like you're going 100 miles an hour, but I'm doing 45 kilometers an hour right now.
If any of you are interested in kind of sporty or performance driving, uh, I would highly recommend it. Like I said before, we always put these on every one of uh, uh, the cars that we can. And, uh, and for something uh, that really improves the way that the car feels uh, and bang for buck, honestly, it can't be beat. So make sure to check them out. Uh, go to Kent Auto Development, KAD. Uh, you can also check out our website, steepsmotorco.com. We got lots of cool stuff on there. We're always developing new parts. Uh, and if this helped you out, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell to know when all of our videos are coming out. And as always, thanks for watching.